Hi, my name is David Bunn, and I'm going to do a quick tutorial video today on uh, covalent bonding. So for this video, we're going to use the carbon atom, and we're going to use the hydrogen atom. And these are these atoms show how atoms can share electrons very well, so that's why we chose those. Now, a quick uh, backup in case you're not sure of what these illustrations represent. Uh, this here, this is the nucleus of an atom and it has the protons and neutrons in it. Um, this particular atom is carbon. Carbon is number six on the periodic table, which just means that it has six protons inside the nucleus. So that blue circle is a nucleus. The, uh, the yellow circles here, as I put down here in the corner, are electrons. They have a negative charge, and you can see for every positive charge, so there's six positive charges here, that we have six uh, negative charges, which basically, uh, neutralizes this atom it makes it a neutral atom you'll have you'll have six pluses and six minuses which is going to equal out to a no charge and you'll notice that there are circles around the nucleus here these are are called energy levels or orbitals and what they do is they give the electrons a place to spin just like my pen is spinning around here right now that's what the electrons do kind of like planets around the sun they orbit and they they stay for the most part in this particular energy level and each energy level has a certain maximum number of electrons you can put in it. So this first level holds two, and then the second level, it has four in it, but it can actually hold eight. It, the second level holds eight electrons. And that's, atoms don't necessarily like that. They don't necessarily like to have uh, empty energy levels or even almost full in if we talk about ionic bonds, you might know that sodium is it has one extra electron and chlorine has is one short of filling that up, and so they, they tend to get rid of or add electrons. Well, carbon in this case isn't going to want to stay like this either. So what happens is, is it, it will try to find a way to fill up that second shell. And now since it has four, it's not going to just dump them and become an ion, which you may have learned about if you learned about ionic bonding. Uh, what it's going to do, it's, it's going to try and find a way to fill this up without getting rid of electrons or trying to just grab on to free electrons floating around. So what happens with a, a covalent bond, covalent is, is basically a sharing bond, and what we'll do is it, it will go around and it will try to find other atoms that need help filling their energy levels. Hydrogen is a great example. Hydrogen's a very reactive uh, atom because it has only one electron here in this shell. And so what it'll do is if they get close enough, they'll actually come together here and then they'll share their electrons. So it'll kind of spin around like this. And so what, what happens is for a little while, this uh, hydrogen will will have both of these electrons spinning around and that will give it two in that first orbital or energy level so that makes it equal or I'm sorry makes it full and then over here carbon will take this electron every once in a while and that will give it two there now this hydrogen he's happy but carbon not yet because it still has to fill these other empty spots. So right now this outer energy level for carbon, it has its four that were originally there plus this one. So it has five. There's still room for three more. And so this right here, this is called a covalent bond. And it's a pretty strong bond. And it holds pretty tight. But again, not happy. So what we'll do is we'll bring this other hydrogen here. This hydrogen, we're going to kind of run out of space here, but uh, let's, uh, let's see. Let's move everything over just enough here to, to get this taken care of. So we'll bring this hydrogen up here, spin him around for effect, bring him here. And then this hydrogen also can come up here and bond there. So Again, let's let's get this mess here taken care of a little bit too tight. Now, again, this all these are going to bond and they're going to share. Uh, I, I guess it's kind of the example would be is if you is you and a couple of buddies wanted to go in for uh, a TV 
and you couldn't afford the TV individually, but if you pull your money together, then you can buy the TV. The problem is, though, is that you have to share. So that's what's going on here. These, these electrons are, are being shared between the carbon and the hydrogen. And now what's happening is everybody, well, all these atoms are, are happy. So there's two for this hydrogen, two for this hydrogen, two for this hydrogen, two for this hydrogen. And that fills its first level. The first level can only hold two. Carbon, it has two in the first, and then it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the second. So now it's happy as well. Now what you'll find in a lot of these cases where you have a, a covalent bond, sometimes they don't share equally. Uh, water is an example of that where the H, the two H's and the O and H2O, they're, they're not shared equally. But it, it still solves the problem. It's, it's a best case scenario for this. And so what we've done is we've formed a compound and it's a covalently bonded compound. And how we would write that, we'd write the carbon atom and then we'd write the H and then we put a subscript 4 here and that's CH4, which is methane gas. Another way you can draw this is with the carbon and we use this stick model. The stick shows a covalent bond, and this is a little faster way to show what's going on without drawing all the electrons. So there's C and then the four H's, and each of these sticks represents a covalent bond. So that's it's a pretty complex process, but just for the for the uh, a basic idea of how this works, this is a covalently bonded CH4 compound.